what's up? Thanks for stopping by. I got another video about this guitar. It's not the best lighting in here, so I'm going to show you a clip now of the guitar in a better lighting. So if you've been tuning into my channel, then you know I've made a lot of videos about this guitar. Probably over 30 videos now in a playlist. If you're interested, go check that out. What I did is I started with a two-piece alder body unfinished, a custom neck that was unfinished, and then I tinted with nitrocellulose the headstock and the neck. I'll show you the back here. And I also finished in nitrocellulose black, the body, and then I finished everything in a nitrocellulose clear. So any part of the guitar that you can think about from the top to the bottom, I covered it all. And I bought some fender parts, I bought some other parts, but I tried to use the best quality parts I could and keep everything for about under a thousand dollars. So you can really tell that labor costs a lot when you're thinking about maybe Fender Custom Shop, something like that. Now this is the first guitar I've done like this and I was really pleased with the way it turned out. And that's why I'm sharing all these videos with you in hopes that it will help you if you're thinking about doing something similar. So this video in particular is going to focus on the installation of the trim assembly. Now I've got a couple of videos detailing a, a trim assembly that I chose initially and did not end up using. It's a Wilkinson trim that's pretty popular. And the one I went with is an American Vintage 62. It goes by a few different names, but I've got a video specifically on that as well if you're interested in the details. But this video is going to focus on some of the concerns I had with installing it, um, about lineup and about interference issues and things like that. So of course, stay tuned to the video to learn more about that. But let me say up front that when you're thinking about buying a body, now again, this is a two-piece alder body that I got from ToneBomb.com. But when you're buying these things, just be aware that sometimes they come with the trim assembly holes pre-drilled. And that's the way I chose to buy mine. Now, if you are really industrious and you want to go about doing something like that, Maybe you're one of these people that starts with a scrap of wood and you can put together a strat or, or a telly body and you can carve it and all that good stuff. My appreciation and respect and kudos goes out to you. That's not something that I, at least at this point in my life, uh, have attempted to try and I don't have the tools to do it anyway. But that being said, I have you know pretty much rudimentary tools and if you look at my videos, you'll see that you can get a lot done without having to purchase a lot in tools. That being said, also I've got some videos coming up on um, some fret work that I did and the, um, the wiring, the internals of the guitar, the pickups that I chose, the uh, particular wiring, the pots, the switches, um, the configuration as far as like treble bleed and grease bucket circuits and the switching, that, that kind of stuff. So be on the lookout for a video about those things a little later. Yeah, so with my skill level, I didn't want to attempt to drill holes in the body for these six screws because I was afraid that I would screw it up. You know, and this is really one of those things, you know, with the bolt-on neck, if you buy a neck that has not been drilled before, you know, you're going to have to drill them for the first time, these holes. Even if you buy a neck, like a parts neck from another guitar, the holes probably not going to line up perfectly with the holes in your body. So that is one of those things that takes a lot of gumption and uh, bravery to tackle, but it can be done. You know, feel free to watch the video on how I did mine without a drill press. But I say all that to just be aware that you can buy a body, a strap body, without these holes pre-drilled. So just be cognizant of it if you want to be brave and try that. You know, you got a lot of the lining up to think about. You have uh, the intonation and and the, the scale length of the guitar. You've got to worry about the pick guard fitting around it and everything. You've got to be lined up, perfectly centered. So. It's just something that I didn't want to try. So if you buy a body, I don't want you to be surprised when it comes without holes in it. It's just something to think about and to keep in mind. All right, let's get to it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've got the Tremolo, if you want to call it that, assembly sort of temporarily installed just as a check. I wanted for one thing to see how easy the screws would go into the body, whether I needed to drill out anything or, I don't know if you call it chamfer or um, if I needed to kind of like make an area at the top of the hole. Anyway, so um, the screws went in well. I did not even need to use any kind of soap or wax. It's wiggin', wiggin', wiggin whack. Um, they just went right in very easily. They weren't loose or anything like that. So they're in there nice and firm, but I, I didn't need any kind of uh, lubrication for them. And um, the way I did it, I didn't put any finish underneath. So there was no risk of cracking the finish or pulling any of that up. So I felt pretty comfortable doing that. 
I'm still waiting on the clear coat and everything to actually dry the two week uh, period that I have to let this dry. So I really shouldn't be messing with it too much, but again, there's actually no finish under here and I'm not gonna leave it like this. I'm gonna just take this off and set it back to dry hanging up. Uh, anyway, so, but I wanted to make a note real quick. So I put these screws all the way down. So I'm never gonna have the tremolo or the trim assembly like this, even probably bending. I mean, maybe it's a pretty, that's the, as far up as it'll go. So that's like your biggest dive bomb. That's as far as the knife edge, the front edge will go down to the body. But I just wanted to verify that the screws will not come out the back where the, the claw spring assembly is. And they did not, which I wasn't too afraid of after I kind of got my bearing straight. But I'm gonna take this out and I'll show you why I was a little concerned. And if you come across that, well, you may be concerned. This is how I'm gonna have the actual trim sitting on top of the guitar. I'm gonna have either three to five springs on the back. I'm not sure at this point, but I'm gonna have those pulling to where the, the bridge assembly is. The back of it is flush or down on top of the body of the guitar. And so doing that is I'm gonna do the method where I have these two outer screws here um, screwed all the way down to where they just touch the top of the bridge plate. And then I'm gonna back out the four middle screws. So it's almost gonna be like the two point trim that was on the American Standard for a while. So that's the plan. Now what I wanted to show you is, I was a little worried about at one point the fact that these screws are almost the exact um, depth of the, of the part where they're gonna screw into with the body. So um, I don't know if I can show you that, but if I put the screw in like so, if I kind of put the screw in like, to where it's to where it would be at. There you go. I'm I'm putting it flush with the body, and you can see just how close it is to the back of that uh, trim claw cavity. And so I was worried. Well, it's going to push through the back, and uh, I looked in again at the body that I had. You know the dimensions on it that came from eBay. Um, not that that would really help. I could just measure it myself. Um, but anyway, so the uh, so the depth there is about like an inch and an eighth. Yeah, about an inch and an eighth. And then the screw is also about an inch and an eighth. So they're almost exactly the same dimension. So the thing is though, the reason why it doesn't go through is if you have this sitting up flush on the body of the guitar, it has this knife edge, right? So it's gonna sit up higher. So your um, the body is gonna be like so, and then you've got some, and this is really hard to explain, but anyway, so so the body's gonna be flush, and then this knife edge is gonna be sitting up off the body, and it's gonna be giving that screw a little bit more space. And even if you have the knife edge all the way down, then the screw can only go like this far. So it's still not gonna, so you're saving a little bit of space. Um, you've got some, some wiggle room or, um, a safety factor, if you will, between the length of the screw and the depth of the body right there, at least in my case. So if that's something that you run into, just be aware of that. And then also, if you looked at the, uh, that last little segment where I was, where I had the, the bridge on the knife edge all the way up, like in the dive bomb position, um, you'll notice that on the back that it did not, try not to screw anything up here again, I don't have, the body is not completely, you know, two weeks dry. It is very dry to the touch. But anyway, uh, when I had the, the trim like this and the knife edge, it the the uh, trim block did not hit the back of the body. So that would not be any kind of reason con for concern. So that's really no issue. That's something that, you know, you may run into. I've, I've heard of people having to, like, sand out or route out some of the back of the, of the body right there. Um, so that's that was okay for me. And then flip it back over again because I want to show you something else. I was also concerned. Get this in here. I was also concerned that the um, the springs and the bridge, the uh, block plate would hit the uh, the back guard. And so I just tested it out. Put one of these springs in here, like so. It's not a screw down right now, but anyway, it doesn't interfere with the uh, the back plate at all. So. That's a good thing. There's no issue there. Uh, I've heard of people running into that issue as well, 
where there were some just differences of routing issues and depths to where that was a, an interference or a blockage and that they either didn't they couldn't use the uh, the back plate or they had to do something you know to make it work so thankfully that's not an issue with this that's all folks.